brawl, rape, sexually assault, and steal at only one German train station on New Year's Eve. It was in Breitbart today by Oliver Lane. Did you hear what happened in Cologne? The hotbed of Islam? It turned into a war zone. A thousand of them celebrated by throwing fireworks into crowds and sexually assaulting German women caught up in the train station. I'll read the, the ordeal to you on the Savage Nation so you can see what they said to her and what they did to her and other girls who they considered fair game because they're not Muslims, they're considered whores. I'm sorry to be so blunt, all of you intellectuals out there, but groping is groping and cursing is cursing. And the group was made up exclusively of young Muslims who attacked these German girls. So many men groping at her that she couldn't even identify any of the perpetrators to the police. One woman had her tights and underwear torn off by the crowd of young migrants. And a police in Cologne said that there had been rapes at the station that night. So far, police have identified 88 victims of the Muslim gangs, 35 of which were subjected to sexual attacks. Others were men or women simply assaulted or robbed. There's your migrants. You want more of them in America? Then why don't you join the intellectuals at the New York Times who think that Trump is evil? Maybe you can bring some of these people to a neighborhood near you and then say, I don't know how it happened. Merkel should be arrested for war crimes. Angela Merkel in Germany is a war criminal for what she is doing to Germany. How she gets away with it is astounding, but it's no different than what goes on in America. Back in a minute. It is the Savage Nation. One of the things that I'm going to tell Mr. Trump that I'd love for him to do when he becomes president is immediately conduct a congressional investigation of the ACLU, the most dangerous organization in the history of the United States. If we can uncouple the ACLU, if we can determine the foreign sources of funding, if we can try them under RICO statutes, and we can break up the ACLU, we can possibly save America. They just put out a news release. ACLU comment on raids of Central American families in the United States. And it says to con contact Inga Sarder Sorensen. And they're condemning, guess who? The Homeland Security Department, Jay Johnson. Because Jay Johnson said that it will continue its raids against families who have come to the U.S. after fleeing violence in Central America, like we don't have enough of them. That's a, a ploy, by the way. Oh, it's violent. Oh, yeah, come on in. Cecilia Wang, director of the ACLU's so-called Immigrant Rights Project, Project, said, these raids are a scare tactic to deter other families fleeing violence in Central America. Blah, blah, blah. So Obama, who has flooded America with illegals from everywhere, by the way, the number one source of immigrants coming to America is China right now. Did you know that? That's a little secret that most of you don't know. China is flooding America with those from their own nation they don't want. And so now we are uh, uh, swimming in immigrants. And Secretary Jay Johnson, after failing us in Southern California by not stopping the act of the Muslim murderers, suddenly shows he's getting tough and he's going to crack down on the, the families. He's going to do nothing. And even that little act of Homeland Security is too much for the subversives at the ACLU. Donald, if you're listening, one of the first acts should be a congressional investigation of the criminals in the anti-Christian Liberties Union. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, how are you, Blue Monday? Got to work, plan to sleep all deep. He'll come Tuesday, oh, Tuesday. Well... We knew he was going to do it. We know that the demonic left-wing fanatic in the White House would not stop until it's over. And no one knows whether he'll even leave office. The man is getting away with so many executive actions without any opposition. And there's a high likelihood he will try any trick he can to stay in office. But today, he just gave another speech fresh back from his surfing vacation in Hawaii where he lost more weight. And he said he's going to press ahead with executive action on gun control after meeting with the Stooges in law enforcement, such as Al Sharpton's pick, Loretta Lynch. And he demanded and claimed he has the legal authority to act when he does not. And he says, I have the legal authority to defy Congress, which he does not. And we'll have to see if there is a Congress or a Supreme Court. We don't know where they are. Where the Supreme Court go? Where's that branch of government? We know Congress was neutralized by the uh, executive, the imperial presidency. But anyway, we'll have to see. And I'll tell you where I stand on this. No gun control at all. Zero. And I'll tell you why. You know, you say, well, it's only a small, you know, act. He's going to make sure that they don't give the guns to the crazies. We're all for that. But it's the old, you know, camel's toe in the tent thing here. If you let these left-wing fanatics put their toe in the tent, they'll tear that tent down. And I want to remind the great president about something, even though I know he doesn't listen to the show. He listens only to national uh, Democrat radio, NDR, or CNN, Crescent News Network, the one-stop channel for Sharia law. The fact of the matter is that even Kagan, that... Uh, Supreme Court justice of ours, and in America, everything's like a mad comic. She's a Supreme Court justice, unbelievable to me. In my day, the most, uh, a Bialy woman. Kagan, she'd be wearing a dirty apron on Rivington Street selling Bialy stuckers with her fa in her father's uh, Bialy store. But she's Supreme, Supreme Court justice. He, he put her in. Even she, and when she was going through her congressional hearing, Robert, could you find it, Kagan on gun control? She said when they were grilling her, I, you know, where do you stand on the Second Amendment? Kagan said it's established law. And I'm going to find the clip. Even Kagan, a left-wing fanatic, handpicked by Obama, said that the Second Amendment is established law. So how, how does he have legal authority? I, I don't know. He has no legal authority. He's just doing as though he's Mussolini. That's all. That's simple. Let's take some calls. Marion on the Internet. Welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind, Marion? Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm a Trump supporter, and I just heard the clip of clip, and I was reminded of a personal experience I had this weekend with uh, a relative who is conservative, and I found out he absolutely despises Trump. And if, if Trump, if Trump should get the nomination, that he would even vote for Hillary. He's always been a conservative, and I think maybe he's got a touch of intellectual elitism. What do you think wait, what, what, what is it about Trump that your so-called conservative relative doesn't like? Well, Hello? don't say they aren't specific. Uh, I guess... Uh... I, I heard from a guy I know, a psychiatrist who's somewhat Republican conservative. He said, do you know he doesn't even finish sentences? Do you know that he speaks in, a, in an almost illiterate way? Have you heard that argument? Yeah, yeah. Well, look at how super literate Obama is. I mean, is literacy the only metric we should be using for a president? He's very literate, Obama. He never misses a syllable. So I don't know that Trump's uh, mangling of sentences matters that much to me. I know that I agree with him on most of his points, like ban all Muslim immigrants until we can figure out who's coming in, build a wall with Mexico, make Mexico pay for it. What's wrong with that idea? It was in my book, Stop the Coming Civil War, anyway. I'm sure that it was read by one of his uh, staff, staffers. It's right in my book, Stop the Coming Civil War. One of my 17 uh, talking points. 
So I agree with Trump on virtually everything. I don't know what he said yet that I uh, disagree with. Well, he's That's all. I so, don't wait, so your your main point is that, what, the thinking right also doesn't like Trump? Who, you mean the National Review? The, na the National Review crowd that doesn't like Michael Savage? That crew of, uh, of false elitists? He's not good enough for them? I know the attitude. Yeah, he's not a member of their club. He's not a member of their little club, their little uh, bund. Trump's not a member of the National Review bund. I'll be right back. No, I'm not. It's too early for a break. Sorry. So, you know, I brought up the spanking. No one took the bait on that. And... Uh, Speaking of Trump, I guess we'll stick to Trump for a minute. There was a guy from Esquire magazine, of all places. Who reads Esquire? I don't know. I, I thought it was a girly magazine from the 50s. I never looked at it since. I, I found it in my friend's father's drawer once in 1957. I haven't looked at it since. But nevertheless, it's considered something so important that they have one of the pornographers from Esquire on Meet the Press... Uh, I call it Meet Depressed, which was picked up by others in the media soon thereafter. And one of the depressed hosts on NBC has him on, and he attacks Donald Trump in clip three. I mean, when you look at all the ethnicities, whites are the angriest of, of all Americans, with white women in particular being the angriest subgroup. But when you ask them why, um, the majority of white men and women get really angry when they say that the American dream is not what it used to be, that America's leadership role in the world is not what it used to be, and that life didn't turn out for them the way that they thought it would be. This is the anger of perceived diminishment. And it's why uh, a slogan like Make America Great Again resonates so strongly with, you know, white middle class voters. And what is he? I love all the whites who tell whites what they're thinking and they don't like why. Don't you like that one? I mean, we found it over the week. Jeez, last week was bad. I didn't, say, I didn't say the word. I said the J word, but I didn't finish it. I said geez. I said geez. I mean, the racism in America now that's coming up from the swamp is overwhelming because of Obama's constantly fueling racism. Last week I played on the show Samuel Jackson Jr., who I thought was a good actor. I will never, ever watch anything that he's in again, ever. If I see him on TV, I'll go right by it. Movies I liked him in, won't watch. Movies in, will not go to. The hatred for whites is overwhelming. They're coming out of their mouths. One day after another, I never knew so much hatred existed for white people. Especially when the majority of Americans who go to the movies are white. And they attack them left and right. Well, anyway... That's one of the reasons there's so much uh, anger in the country. The hatred that's been stirred up by this administration is overwhelming. But I don't want to. I don't want to focus on it. The uh, stock market went down 350 points over China economy fears, but it's a bigger problem than Chinese slowdown. We all know that everything goes up and everything comes down. There's also a limit. There is a limit to how high anything can go. There's also a limit to how. An economy can keep growing. There's a limit to how far an economy... It can't endlessly grow. China went from basically the rickshaw to the Oldsmobile in one generation. Right? I, I should pick a better car than that. From the rickshaw to... I need a, an R car. From the rickshaw to the Rolls Royce. Yeah, from the rickshaw to the Rolls in one generation. The biggest export market for <laughs> Bentley is China, by the way. <laughs> so they went from the rickshaw to the Rolls in one generation. How long can that go on? And the question is, what's going to happen to the economy this year? Everyone's asking. And we don't know. No one knows. So we think that the economy is going to tank just in time for the Republicans to pick up the uh, the broken economy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's time to pass the baton to the Republicans now and let them try to fix it. 855-407-282. Here are some of the other topics I haven't gotten to. Heavy preparation. Here are the questions. <laughs> Uh, do you feel that Bernie Sanders is any real competition to Hillary? Are you kidding? He's the comedian put into the pack of cards to make it look like someone's running against her. Uh, is the Republican Party now coming around to the idea of Trump as their candidate? Of course they are. They did everything to block him, and now they're for him. Does Trump's crossover appeal make him a better person to vote for? You know that, you know that the conservative Democrats are going to vote for him, those who've had no one to vote for for years but it will always be a Democrat are going to vote for Trump. You know that. Do you believe in any type of gun control? If so, what? What kind of backlash can Obama expect if he moves forward with his gun control executive action? In your mind, are the Oregon Ranch protesters terrorists or patriots? That's a hot question. Many of you don't know what's going on in Oregon. 
I've studied it to a certain extent. I think I know what's going on, and we'll see uh, what happens. I pray the FBI makes it a peaceful resolution and doesn't put those that father and son in jail for the 